Hi there, you are watching a video of API 653 inspection and repair of above ground storage tanks. Let's start with section 10, dismantling and reconstruction. Dismantling and reconstruction of existed welded tanks must be carried out with a procedure. The work must be authorized by a storage tank design engineer or inspector. The requirements for hydrostatic testing, NDE and well acceptance criteria are contained in API 653 section 12. The tank must be completely clean and gas-freed prior to dismantling. Dismantling methods The roof, shell and bottom plate shall be cut into sizes that can be transported either to the new site or to a storage area. Regarding tank bottom dismantling, if the bottom is to be reused, the bottom can be cut from the shell along lines AA and PB according to APA 653 standard figure 10.1 shown on the right of the screen. If the entire bottom is to be reused, the bottom can be cut from the shell at line C, leaving the shell with a part of the bottom attached. If the tank has an annular plate, it can be left attached to the shell or removed by cutting along BB. Tank shell dismantling. The shell should be cut along the line BB of figure 10.1 mentioned earlier. Shell to bottom joint welds should not be reused unless the entire bottom is reused. Shell of stiffening rings, including wind girders and top angles, can be left attached to the shell plates or removed by cutting the attachment welds. An example of cutting the shell is shown on the screen. Tank roof dismantling. Roof plates are removed by cutting the lap welds or by cutting alongside the remaining welds a minimum of 50 mm two inches, from the weld, except where cut across existing welds. The roof support structures are dismantled either by removing the bolts or studs or by cutting the attachment weld. Piece marking Parts should be durably marked to aid reconstruction and maintain the tank history if required. Drawings showing the piece marks also aid in the reconstruction. A minimum of two marks should be made on the top and bottom of each shell plate to assist with alignment during reconstruction. Tanks reconstruction. This section provides guidelines for the proper reconstruction of a tank, tank elements such as the bottom, shell, roof structural elements, excluding the roof itself. Let's check the welding. Welds will be in accordance with the API 650 standard and the following. The tank shell weld spacing must be according to figure 9.1, shown to the right of the screen. The vertical welds will be offset from the existing ones by at least five times the thickness of the thicker shell cores. minus 17 celsius degrees. When the temperature is between 17.8 celsius degrees and 0 celsius degrees or the thickness exceeds 25.4 millimeters 1 inch it must be heated to a temperature warm to the hand
within a distance of 76 mm 3 inches from the area to be welded. Each weld pass must be cleaned to remove slag and other deposits. The edges of all welds must be blended with the surface of the plate without any sharp angles. The reinforcement of new but welded joints on each side of the plate must not exceed the thicknesses of table 10.1 reproduced below. Once the bottom plates have been tack welded, a sequence must be followed that results in the least distortion due to contraction, providing a flat surface. Shell plates to be butt welded must be aligned and retained in position during welding. The misalignment of vertical joints greater than 15.8 mm may not exceed 10% of the upper plate thickness, with a maximum projection of 3.2 mm. For thicknesses less than or equal to 15.8 mm, the misalignment should not exceed 1.6 mm. There are no special requirements indicated in APA 653 for roofs, hence the guidelines of APA 650 shall be followed. Dimensional tolerances Roundness Tolerances ensure that the rebuild has structural integrity and acceptable appearance and to allow proper function of the floating roofs and seals. Measurements to verify that the rebuild is within these tolerances will be taken prior to hydrostatic testing. Plumbness The maximum out of plumbness of the upper part of the shell with respect to the lower part of the shell should not exceed one hundredth of the total height of the tank to a maximum of 127 millimeters, 5 inches. This criterion will also apply to columns for the fixed roof. For tanks with internal flooring roofs, the criteria of this section or API 650, section 752 and Annex H, section H411 Whichever is more stringent shall apply. Roundness Ready measured 305 mm or 1 foot above the shell to bottom weld shall not exceed the tolerances of table 10.2 reproduced on the screen. Ready measured higher than 1 foot above the shell to bottom weld shall not exceed three times the tolerances indicated in table 10.2. Let's talk about picking. Using a 915 mm long sweep board, picking shall not exceed 12.7 mm. The board should be made with the same curvature as the tank. We can see a picture showing how the measurement of the picking should be made. Banding Using a 915mm long sweep board, banding shall not exceed 25.4mm, 1 inch in this case. Same as for picking, we can see examples of the measurements for banding. Foundations To achieve the tolerances mentioned above, it is essential that the foundation has a well-defined horizontal plane and sufficient load-bearing capacity to maintain the plane. For a concrete ring foundation, the upper surface shall be leveled within plus minus 3.2 mm for every 9144 mm of the circumference and within plus minus 
0.35mm for the total circumference measured from the average elevation. Let's now talk about section 13, marking and reports. Identification plate. Reconstructed tanks. Tanks rebuilt in accordance with this standard will be identified by a plate made of corrosion resistant material as shown in API 653 figure 13.1. Letters and numbers, size no less than 4 mm, can be embossed, engraved or stamped on the plate. The API 653 standard indicates a template to be used for the identification plate of reconstructed tanks, as shown on screen. The identification plate must contain the following information, where the most important one is the standard which the tank was rebuilt with, API 653, addition and revision number, nominal diameter, nominal shell height, maximum permissible operating liquid level, and maximum operating temperature, among others. Record keeping. When a tank is evaluated, repaired, altered, reconstructed in accordance with the API 653 standard, the following information as applicable will become part of the tank owner's operator's records. Calculations for evaluation of components for integrity, re-rating, repair and alteration considerations, and construction and repair plans. Additional supporting data, including but not limited to the following, is also valuable to be recorded. NDEs, material testings, brittle fracture considerations, location and identifications, etc. etc. Certification of reconstructed tanks. Tanks reconstructed in accordance with its standard will require documentation of the reconstruction and also certification that the design, reconstruction, inspection and testing were performed in accordance with the API 653 standard. Examples of certifications are included in the API 653 standard to be used as templates for both reconstructed and designed tanks.